Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. My name is Chris. How, what, how do I start this? I forgot. And my name is Jeremy. Oh, and my name's Captain Curland. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, J-Man. Hi there. Welcome back to the show. Well, now, not really like, officially or right, anything. Right. I just happen to be in the neighborhood. Nice. Yeah, you stopped by, <laughs> twisted your arm, and you came by. And good morning, yeah. of course, to everybody in the jblive.tv chat room who's joining us this morning to play through the missions, chat with the devs. In fact, you're going to come back on later in the end of the episode and do an unofficial uh, live community yeah, feedback the, with the uh, You know, room. I just stopped by, sat down in the in the studio, and everybody started asking questions. So, Matt, happened to be uh getting ready for community feedback yeah and so, so we just kind of did like a impromptu q a with him leading some of the chat room and Absolutely. answering the questions so. and on top of that al will join us next for a chat with al we're going to talk about the new ships that are coming to the sea store and boy do those things look powerful mm -hmm. and he's going to give us the details on that but of course it's also my final review of boldly they rode the last featured episode and coming up in tactical view. You like it? My thoughts on that. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, you know, dude. I made all the rewards. Are you, are you Did you really? all of them? Yeah. 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 I talk about the rewards in the review. I Good. really thought they were really cool. I really like the uh, what is it? Shard of infinite possibilities or something. Shard like? of possibilities. Shard yeah. of possibilities. Yeah. yeah, I think that was great. <laughs> I hope it's not too op. <laughs> well, we'll find out, of course, because you know. And the great thing is, J Man, is people can always write a stoke <laughs> at jupiterbroadcasting.com if they have concerns. So, how you doing? I'm great. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm just kind of in town visiting relatives. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to say, you know, I don't want you to get any grief over this from the other podcasters out there. You know, like I'm playing mm -hmm. favorites. If I visit the the studio where you guys yeah. uh, do your shows, right. I'll, I'll pop in as well. I do happen to be lucky since you don't live your your home up in Washington isn't too far away. Right. right. Exactly. That is kind of an advantage. <laughs> kind of why you started work with me in the first place. Right. <laughs> uh, now, before we get into the rest of the show, I want to give a mention and a big thank you to everybody who's using the affiliate links over Jupiter Broadcasting. You guys are now earning me as much as an advertiser would on this network, and that is a huge relief for us at this point. Here's how you can take advantage of it. If you go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com and scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the page. You will find links down there for Amazon US, UK, Newegg, ThinkGeek, Best Buy, Mint.com, Audible.com, which I love, and the new Chrome extension thanks to some awesome dudes in our chat room. If you grab that Chrome extension, it'll automatically tag your shopping session at any one of those other sites for you. So you don't even have to use our links. It just automatically tags it and we get a small percentage of your purchase. Doesn't cost you anything more and you can help out Jupiter Broadcasting by getting yourself. So wait, I have a question. Shoot. I, I left Jupiter broadcasting and now mm -hmm. you're making money yeah i know right see you're bad man you're bad now you jump <laughs> why do you think i can afford it now because <laughs> you're not paying me yeah exactly <laughs> all right well i've got a lot of show to get into so let's jump into tactical view And welcome to Tactical View. Oh man, here we are, the last set in the latest featured episodes. Five episodes and we wrap with Boldly They Rode and what a freaking mission it was. This gave something the little Trek fan of me has wanted for years. Even before I saw First Contact where they're walking around outside on the, Defi or on the uh, Enterprise's deflector dish. Of course I was like, oh man, oh man, I'd love to be able to do that. But I never thought it'd be a possibility. Boy, did this mission deliver, and it delivered way beyond my expectations. The external scenes of Deep Space Nine were truly some of the best work I've ever seen done in this game. It was extremely well detailed, it was immersive, and it exceeded everything that I expected. I would love to see that used, something like that in the future. I've always wanted to do that as a Star Trek fan. I am a huge fan of all of the models and ships in this game, and in, and in the series, and to be able to walk around like that, oh, oh, oh man, did that feel rewarding. And, and then to keep the suit. You get to keep the, the uh, EV suit, which I guess is technically a Cardassian suit. If you look closely on the little box that's in the uh, airlock of the Jemadar ship, it's a Cardassian box. So I guess you're technically now walking around in Cardassian EV suits. Uh, moving on from there, I thought going out into space was a very great, epic, rewarding battle to wrap it all up on. It also gave us a shot to see a hero moment of the Enterprise F where there's that whole, Captain, 
there's a ship entering the system, and the Enterprise F warps in, and you get to see a brief glimpse of what seems to be maybe one of the most epic new original bridges that's been brought to the game. Can't wait to get my hands on that, but I think we'll have to wait for the Sea Store bundle. And we also got to meet the new Enterprise F captain. Now, some people in the IRC chat room were a little underwhelmed with him, but I think that's just because they were just laying the groundwork, and hopefully we'll see more background details about him in a future mission or in a future event or something like that. Um, going on from there, I really enjoyed the rewards. I love the idea of the Shard of Possibilities. Now, that's a limited time reward, so you're going to need to pick that up. I don't know exactly when it ends. I didn't, I didn't check on that, but you're going to need to pick it up fairly soon. Otherwise, down the road, you're going to see people walk around with this cool ability that you don't have. It equips as a device, and you fire it off, and you get basically two clones of yourself. Now, it does have a 10-minute cooldown, and I think it only lasts for about 30 seconds, <laughs> so use that very wisely. Um, I also thought that the, uh, the end shield piece is a great final piece to, to, uh, to complete the Gemadar space set. Now, I wonder if there's some balancing issues at this point, but um, we'll see how those shake out over the next few days once they, they, get a time, once they get a chance to look at those. Ending the mission on the social map was a great way to let me see what all of my other friends were doing and sort of have a huzzah moment. And after building for five episodes towards this rather epic finale, to end it all with my buddies and see them firing off their abilities... That was a really nice touch. Uh, I personally also found the destroyed Deep Space Nine really well done. There was this moment uh, where there's this force field that uh, is got the top of the ceiling uh, sealed off. Now, I try not to give many spoilers in these tactical reviews. I walk that line closely, but this is just such a great moment I have to talk about. It. You go up to the panel, the force field drops, and it blows the Jem'Hadar up out of Deep Space Nine. Taking advantage of the damage station like that, it's a nice touch, and it's something that you don't normally get to do in Deep Space Nine. You have, so you have that great space walk around. They, they, you, the exterior of Deep Space Nine was fantastic. You have a, a really great battle at the end, and you also get a bunch of good things to do inside Deep Space Nine, which is sort of this, this become this home in, in Star Trek Online. I mean, we have Earth Space Dock, but Deep Space Nine is really where all the action happened in this entire series. And it's kind of made me relate to the whole area a little differently now. A ton of fun also when you're running around Deep Space Nine. There's extra little rewards you can do on the side. Like, I went and looted the uh, weapon stock and I got myself a little gun that I'll probably give to one of my boffs. So be sure when you run around the promenade that you pick up some of that stuff because uh, you never know what kind of goodies are in there. Overall, I'd say this is absolutely my favorite of the five missions. So much so that after the interview with Daniel Stahl last week, and he kind of said some things that made me think that perhaps Cryptic isn't seeing the return on investment that they want with these featured episodes. And I think we've kind of read between the lines, and we know that doing these featured episodes really puts Cryptic on sort of a blinder mode, and they really have to focus the entire team on cranking out this content. I wonder if a different approach, maybe only one mission, maybe once a month, maybe once every two months, isn't a better route to go. Because that exterior map is far beyond anything we have the capability as players to do in the Foundry. And it sets the bar, and it sort of pushes the Foundry squad, or the Foundry creators, further and further to create more and more creative maps, especially if some of these elements were added to the Foundry. That would really do it. And if it was a month cliffhanger, and this is, I'm just thinking of this kind of on the spot, but if you had, uh, say, a once a month mission, and it was only one mission, but it was just as amazing as this last one was, and it was a cliffhanger, you could have Foundry authors fill in the details and create the next part of that mission until the next one shipped. So it could be a really great way to seed content to the Foundry if at the same time they're getting access to those maps. It's something to possibly think about in a different perspective since I'm not so positive we're going to see a featured episode for a really long time. Overall, though, I've really enjoyed reviewing all five of these, but this was absolutely my favorite. It'll go down as one of my favorite missions in Star Trek Online just because it satisfied me so much as a Star Trek fan. Now, I have to kind of say this is the wrap-up of the Tactical View segment. At least for a little while, we're going to bring back Foundry files and things like that, so we'll still be reviewing content. But for me personally, this is absolutely one of my favorite highlights of the game for a long time, and it was a great way to wrap up this five-arc storyline. All right, well, that's all I got for Tactical View. It's time to move on. And welcome to the chat with Al, and it's a special chat this week because Mav from Jupiter Force is joining us. Hey there, Mav. Hey, how's it going? And uh, we're both here this week because uh, Al made a big post in the forums about uh, some new ships we're going to be seeing in the Sea Store. It's a lot to cover, but Al, do you kind of want to give us a brief overview, or as brief as it can be, on what was announced this week? Sure, sure. Um, I am going to do one quick geek moment uh, in, uh, interruption here. Okay, Because no I'm just problem. completely excited that 
that uh, I am going to see Shatner's World this weekend. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I got my tickets. I'm going to be seeing in San Francisco at the Orpheum Theater. I'm yes. so, so stoked. I've that's actually like, heard it's good, too. I've heard it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. It was the last thing I did in my computer, and I hit the print, and then boom, my computer died. So yeah. it was the last thing my computer uh, did. So. People, people who are not watching live don't know this, but Al literally had to save his machine from a meltdown in order to make it for the show today. Yeah, I had to rebuild it. <laughs> we were, it was play, it was touch and go in the chat room if Al was going to make it, but he got it all put together, which is good because I think a lot of people want to hear about these ships. If they're yeah. like me, they're ship geeks out there, and they're already chomping at the bit. Yeah, so um, so I made a post, and it's full of typos, so uh, <laughs> I, I, I made a challenge to see if people would get me 500 Twitter followers, and they did it in like a half a day, and I didn't think they would do it. And what uh, is the Twitter handle? Um, it's at, at, uh, at Captain Gecko. There you so, go. And it's on, the, it's, on, it's on my signature on all my, on my posts in the forum, so you can always see it there if you want to know what, uh, what if you want to follow. I, I tweet a lot of, I, I don't tweet a lot, any, any, any personal garbage, I just tweet only, only STO stuff, so. There you go. Um, Good. I usually put in good information there, what I'm working on and such. But um, so I made so so I had to rush and put this post together really quick because uh, I, I I didn't think they would do it so fast. And so there are some typos. But if you go into the forums and I think Christy said you're going to put a link to the show notes on there. I'm going to try to update it this weekend to make sure that it's accurate. Okay. Um, but uh, basically, we are releasing the uh, the new uh, advanced versions of the Odyssey and the uh, Bortos, which is the the uh, this now called the Bortos Q U apostrophe Klingon, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there will be three <laughs> versions. There will be a there will be a, uh, an engineering science and tactical skew of the Odyssey and an engineering science and tactical skew of the of the Bortos. Uh, each one comes with its own console and uh, special console and the consoles. Art can be shared across all the different uh, variants of the uh, advanced flagships, right? And uh, and no other ship. And if you have all three, you get a set bonus from all three. That's a pretty interesting move, I gotta say. That's uh, that's gonna get me to buy all three ships, basically. There, also, <laughs> well done oh. on that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true too. <laughs> oh, funny, funny how that works. <laughs> um, the uh, um. The stats on the ships are very similar to the non uh, the the non advanced version that we gave away during the anniversary event. Excuse me, I could keep turning my head looking at the stats. Over oh, it's here. no problem. You got it. Um, so they they are as far as hit points are the same. The weapon slots are the same. The device slotting are the same. The hull strength, the warp turn rate, speed, right? The turn rate's the uh, same. Turn rate's the same. Impulse modifier, shield modifier, all of that is the same. What is different is the bridge officer seating is different. So the uh, the the advanced versions convert the ensign slot into an ensign universal slot. So there are two universal slots on these ships, an ensign oh, universal boy. and a lieutenant commander universal. I think I typed out on the post on the Bortosk and said lieutenant universal, which is, uh, uh, I'm not sure, maybe I updated that already. Uh, okay. But, but it is lieutenant commander universal and ensign universal on all of those ships. Um, all six of the ships have the same seating. Um, also, the, the pap on here, I have not updated the post on here. The power settings are, the, uh, are on the post are written the same, but that's not actually not accurate. Each ship has different power, uh, power setting differences. So okay. the tactical ship has more, ta more weapons energy and, and uh, science ship has more auxiliary energy uh, and so forth. Um, and then the, probably the, the, um, the most uh, important differences between them is that each one has one extra console slot based on its skew for a total of 10 console slot, which will be the first ship that will have 10 console slots on. Oh, boy. Um, so, the, uh, so the tactical Bortos will have five tactical console slots, and the engineering Odyssey will have five engineering console slots. Um, part of that is to say, hey, you know, these are badass ships. Part of it is also is that we are, you know, we're kind of expecting you to slot all three console slots, and so you're going to give, you know, one console slot is, you know, every time you get a, a sea store ship, you get a console, and so you're expected to use that. But now we're asking you to put in two more to make the complete set. So one of them is kind of going into that free one we're giving you, and then that last one is uh, that's where we're giving you a set bonus. So in gotcha. addition to that, so we're trying to make up for the fact that you're slotting three slots, three three consoles. Um, so we're giving you the extra console slot to kind of make up for that. Gotcha. Um, so uh, now, are you it, concerned at all about yes. um, OP uh, and and making the other ships sort of seem? I, I guess what I'm saying is, is are you sort of setting a domino effect where you're now moving forward how powerful these ships are, which you're kind of kind of have to now go back and maybe drag the other other ships along with it, or is that not an issue the way that the system works? 
Well, um, that is always a concern, and it's definitely a concern. So, so we're, hopefully we should have these up on Tribble on Monday or Tuesday for testing. Okay. Um, uh, no promises on that. No promise. And, and, and I'm just going to put another caveat out there, just like I always say, all these stats and specs are, are subject to change. So uh, we'll, we'll, see how, we'll see how things go. But as far as whether or not they're going to be overpowered, well, you know, when we released the, uh, the, 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 the other flagships, the original flagships during, for, uh, for, the, uh, um, for the anniversary event, you know, a lot of complaints were, you know, hey, it's an awesome ship, it's got awesome stats, everyone loved them, concerned about the turn rates, you know, whether or not it's viable in PvP. So um, I'm interesting to, interested to see on how, whether or not these other bonuses are going to kind of compensate, say, for the turn rate changes. So, uh, and whether or not they'll become viable ships in PvP. I mean, these ships are designed supposed to be big, heavy beasts, big, heavy support ships, um, not supposed to replace the roles. I mean, you're still going to want good science ships and good escorts out there. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and it's not, they're not meant to be, to replace everything. They are meant to give you, you know, value for what you're purchasing, and they are meant to be fun, and they are meant to be exciting. But uh, if they are overpowered, um, don't expect us to bring all the other ships up to this level. We will bring this one down a little, these down a little bit more. So, oh, okay, I see. So, but we, but um, I'm, I'm hoping we shouldn't have to do that too much. And if we, if we did, it would be more on tweaking the powers that come with them. Um, I don't think the extra console slot will be that big of a deal because, because of, uh, because of the, you're going to be using them up. But, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what feedback, what, what, what uh, happens with feedback. I'm really interested to see how these do in PVE and PVP. Now, so. Mav, I know you had some questions regarding the ship, so if any of the, any of the things Gecko's covered yet kind of triggers a question for you, feel free to throw it in there. Okay. Um, so far, kind of what I've followed is, uh, Al, is that th these are sort of the new bar for the... Uh, the flagship is that the term that cryptic is, is uh, I, we've we you know we've used that term probably incorrectly a few times you know i mean the flagship is the enterprise right and the flagship is the is the, on the klingon side is the bortosk um that's not what players are flying they're not flying the flagships per se but these are the models of the flagships right so they they uh it's it's a it's it's uh it's semantics but okay. uh they they aren't necessarily supposed to mean that these are supposed to be the the only ships and the best ships in the game they you know they should be filling a role Right. They right. should fill a different role than what other ships have, have, have come with. So that's um, really the key. Yes. Um, okay. Never do we ever want to release a ship that this is the best ship and only this, this is the only ship that you should ever use, even within particular class. You know, sometimes that happens, but lots of times it's arguable which one is better and it's not about play style. And hopefully this is going to be something really fun and really powerful for someone's particular play style. But some people will say, now nah, this is not for me. I want to play. I still want to play my Excelsior. I want to play. I, I want to play the. Uh, you know, I want to play the, the, the Prometheus. I want to play whatever. That, you know, that's that, that's more my style. That's what I enjoy more. But hope. But hopefully, this should give people a lot of different options because we. You know, because there are six variants or three variants per side, mm -hmm. so people can. Uh, so everyone hopefully find something for them. We can talk a little bit about the consoles that are on them, unless you want to jump in with questions first. Uh, Mav, is there any questions up to this point? I'd love to hear about the consoles, but I, if we have something that fits, go ahead and throw it in. Well, directly, that's one of the top questions is, uh, why the three consoles across the uh, ship series? What was, um, the, what was the concept behind creating a three-console set, you know, one per each ship for this, for this particular item? Well, it, it's it's one of those. Well, there's a couple things. I mean, it, you know, it, like any design process, it was very organic, right? When we first designed the flagship, the 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 the, the Enterprise flagship, the the the, the Odyssey class, the, the when we very first saw um, this concept art for it, you couldn't really see the back, and I always kind of imagined that the back was kind of <laughs> flat and kind of almost like a landing bay sort of thing. And mm -hmm. as we worked with Adam to design it, it's like it wouldn't be neat if we kind of slotted in a, like a little, a little ship that was, it was, we kind of was going for a catamaran almost kind of style for a while. For a while, the ship had a catamaran design. Um, so we were docking like a little Zodiac back there. And so that was kind of like the seed of when we started uh, launching the, you know, where the escort launches from the back. And of course, we wanted to add saucer separation to it. And you could see it, the design was begging for it. Because if you, when, <laughs> yeah. once you see it oh, separate, yeah. the, oh, arrow, yeah. put the arrowhead on it, I mean, it looks very Prometheus like once it separates. So we knew right away, I knew exactly what I wanted the Odyssey, uh, uh, um, Advanced Odyssey to look to do. I wanted to have that, that, that escort launch and I wanted to have the saucer separation. And the saucer separate, when the saucer separates, your ship automatically gets uh, you know an increased turn rate a, a, a bonus, just like on the galaxy so separation. That's what and, I'm looking forward to, right and, there. Yeah, and and, uh, and the and the Aquarius escort, and we call it the Aquarius, which uh, I think um, 
Captain Logan, um, Adam, came up with that name. Um, that's the name of the one of the mission pods on the uh, on one of the Apollo missions. It was the Aquarius, and <laughs> awesome. or the, the flight one was called the the, uh, the the orbit orbital module was called the Odyssey, and so that one was called the Aquarius. I, I, I forgot the the exact background, but that's where we came up with the name for that one. Right on. So that one's a mean little beast. It's like it's like watching a Defiant fly because it's really fast. It's got the quad cannons. It's got a point defense system. It's a mean little little ship. When that launches, you won't get a turn rate bonus from it, but it's uh it's 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 really fun to watch. It's really fast and really devastating. Um, so we did that and. And then, and then, um, and then we were trying to figure out what we want to do with the with the uh, with the Bortosk, and said, well, let's you know we had different designs. Adam once had kind of an almost an uh, you know a double wing design on it before, where he and he says, oh, we can make a little bird of prey launches from that, and then it's kind of a little bit different now when you see it. It kind of s- slides out the back, and so let's have a little launch a little bird of prey. He says, well, we need to have a second ability so it matches up with the Odyssey, and then we came up with. Uh, with the uh, with this kind of cannon barrage, it's kind of like the Spinal Lance, but it does about twenty percent more damage. But it does it over time, and it's with cannon damage. It's really powerful. Okay. Um, and so so we started doing that. Says you know what? That's a lot of abilities for just one ship. And so mm-hmm. we started going back and forth. And says well, what if we? And it's, I honestly believe it was a user who said in the forum says you know why don't they? You know they should be three. You know three versions. I says hey, that's a great idea. Let's just do three versions of that. So uh, it was a I think it was a user who actually came up with that. Who 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 where I where I first heard the idea. Um, so it says. Well, let's do let's do one of each one of each. Uh, um, you know, it kind of scratches that collector's itch too, because then I yeah. want to get one of each. <laughs> yeah, and, and so you know, there, there, there's there's some of that, right? Make sure the collectors don't want to get different ones. So that allowed us to say, okay, we can just make three different ships, um, put one of the abilities on each, and uh, and we'll come. We came up with a couple other a couple other abilities for them, and. Um, and and, and 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 so that also satisfied the idea to someone who you know oh they're complaining that I don't like the Odyssey uh, stats because it doesn't have enough tactical sp- you know spaces in it you know they're saying that people are saying why isn't the Odyssey they didn't like it that it was science heavy even though that I'll still stand by it I think that was the best design for what the flag- Federation's flagship would be would be more about exploration so we gave them an opportunity to have a little bit more of a tactical version a little bit more of a standard cruiser version and so that allowed us to kind of you know you know let people choose choose which which one they wanted to fly on and so I was really happy with that and and then the rest of the design just kind of flew, uh, just kind of came organically from that um, I don't think if we would have released one ship we would have put so many things onto one ship so how um, does that itself. work like uh, in actual application do we have uh, so when we uh, when we equip these new three consoles do we get we get new buttons and then do they all have a unit do they have a shared cooldown or can they fire no, off independently how's that work um, th- there's no there's no shared cooldown. Although you cannot launch both the saucer and the escort at the same time. Um, so you, when you launch one, the other one goes uh, gets uh, um, gets gets disabled. So you can only launch one at a time. Um, they're not on shared cooldown. So once the once the saucer returns, you can immediately launch the escort. Um, the uh, the worker bees you can launch anytime. And in fact, the work bees. And I was really excited to finally get the work bees. Somebody made work bees. Uh, um, they they were put inside our space dock and they were used in the in the in featured episode three, and so I was really excited to finally get those models. And so I had the the Odyssey launches the work bees, and you can have the work bees follow your escort or follow your saucer to keep them alive even better. So that's kind of fun to watch a really like swarm that. of work bees following them. You can put it on, on an ally, of course. Uh, the uh, uh, just to talk a little bit about the work bees. The work bees you launch, it launches four little work bees, and they're not. I didn't really didn't want them to feel like. They don't want the ship to feel like a carrier, so I want it to feel a little bit more like boarding party as far as making it feel like a power more than a pet. But you launch them, and the bees are not targetable, but they can be destroyed with splash damage. Hmm. And okay. they will, they will, uh, they're really small, so they don't really get in your way too much. You won't see a bunch of targeting reticles off them because they're not targetable. Um, and as soon as you go below 75% health, one of them will heal you, and then it disengages. It's gone. It's consumed. And, okay. then, and then the next one will heal, the next one will heal. And, uh, and then you can recast them if you like on yourself. You can refresh all four, put the four in somebody else. So that's how those work. Um, okay. I lost track of your question. Mav, did you <laughs> have another? Was there another part of that question? Well, you know, not to so that part of the question. The, the you answered the Aquarius uh, and saucer set uh, flying at the same time question. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, there was a generic question: Is this kind of a lead into a preview of what we can expect from other tier six ships? Um, as far as what? As far as capability? As far as selling selling them uh, with S threes or something? Or that's why that's why I was a, it was a very generic question. As far as I, w- I would assume, as far as the design and the and the allowing of additional slots, the power or, load of it, or the, or right. The, right? Just I mean, the it's a powerful ship. Power yeah. load. Because yeah. there's people who are asking in regards, you know, especially right now, 
with the uh, Bortosk. Uh, you know, quad cannons, and quad cannons on the ox on the ox craft, quad cannons on the flagship. Do we think that might be a little OP? Um, we're gonna find out. But it's, yeah. not meant to, but, but it's not meant to be. <laughs> it's not meant to be. But that's you know, why it's right. going on triple. Yeah, yeah. we're right. gonna make the only one make it fun. I mean, quad cannons. Uh, you know, the quad cannons on the uh, on the on the auxiliary crafts. I don't think that in any way makes it particularly OP. Um, you know, they they are small auxiliary crafts. They're they're um, largely a part of it is a visual and an excitement, and it's a slight increase in damage for them. It's not. It's not. It's not like something is going to be. I'm not concerned at all about that being particularly overpowered. Um, you know, if you want to put quad cannons on your board task itself, I've got plenty of people arguing that it's completely worthless because of the turn rate um, that you can't bring those cannons to bear. <laughs> yeah, we right, right. That one. So, yeah. and, and the same, you know, the same issue with its, you know, with its, uh, you know, its auto cannon. That's that that it's one of its abilities, which is why it comes with the substace snare. Which um, no, not a lot of people have talked about, but we found it to be particularly really, really powerful. So I'm trying to find ways to um, make sure it doesn't get out of control. The yeah. subspace snare is is the opposite of uh, subspace jump, which allows you to teleport somebody directly in front of you at about two, three k in front of you, and then their engines are stalled for about only about two seconds. <laughs> um, yeah, there there was concerns already regarding the subspace snare in so contrast. So, yeah, yeah. The so jump. so so we on, on some testing we did this weekend, it basically uh, destroyed everything. So it was <laughs> so we recognize it's overpowered right now. So so things we're adjusting right now, I've adjusted it so the subspace snare you have to be I reduced its range to six k. So if you see a board task out there and it's using subspace snare. As long as you say 6k away, you can, you're not going to get snared by it. So I think that should be kind of fun. It's like, just don't get too close. It's, oh, I got 6k, boom, you get popped, right? Yeah. So um, that should be fun. I also made it that uh, you can, I added to attack pattern Omega, um, scattering field, um, polarize hull, and um, uh, 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 reverse shield polarity all gives you resistant or uh, immunity to teleportation. So okay. you can run all of those and not be snared. Okay. Um, it, it will be hard because it's prophylactic as opposed to reactionary, but right. I'm going to see if we can do something like if you're starting to get snared, you'll get a little glow and, you know, so you'll have time Some to kind, kind of, of pre-warning yeah, to, yeah, to use a countermeasure. Pop, pop your Omega. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that, but I'm going to try to do that on Monday. So okay. uh, any QA, te any triple testing won't have that once that goes out, but that'll, that's still something we haven't done. Okay. But um, so, you know, we're, we're, we understand that they're there, but this is, this is why we're going up in triple. So we'll test it and we'll, and we'll tweak it. So, you know, I want to make it clear. These are, I'm not trying to set a new bar. As far as all, how powerful all these ships are, be these these ships have disadvantages. They're slow, right? They have a very slow turn rate, and it's been a constant. You know, mm -hmm. you know, people. You don't see tons of Odysseys and Bortos in PvP or PVE, right? I think I'm seeing just about a, a right amount of them there for a particular play style. Um, I don't think you fared so well in that PvP match. Uh, no, uh, I'll be honest. <laughs> it, it, that, the turn rate is probably the biggest thing. That's what I really like about the Excelsior. But I'm wondering, I'm wondering if I can do something to improve it. Do I have any chance with consoles or anything like that to up that turn rate, or is it just is well, it just so is it so low to begin with? There's not much I can do to amp it up. Well, you can uh, the, the current Odyssey certainly you can if you add I think it's the Omega set plus uh, alone, and then of course you can add the the RCS thrusters to your yeah. console. You can get the turn rate up to something like twelve. Oh, so okay. Um, you know, but you don't even have to invest that many RCS turn rates into it. You can you can improve it. Um, so it's the, not a lost cause, then. I, I no, it's it's not. You just have to build that way, and, okay. and or 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 you accept that you're that you are a support craft, which is what it's really designed for, right? You're a heavy right. tank support craft. You're right. not you're not the front line. You're there right. backing up the other ships. That's probably uh, where I should be, anyways. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, but but if you notice the uh, the set bonus from the consoles is a turn rate bonus. So if you so if you slot all three consoles, that's right. yeah, you get that's, a turn rate bonus. Yeah. Um, so 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 there's so there's that. Okay. Um, Matt, do we have any other questions that came in that uh, you thought we should get while we have Al on the line? Uh, there was one question, and it, it's come across the chat room, and I didn't quite get an answer. I didn't quite see an answer come across. Is there a plan to allow quad cannons to be used on the Odyssey at any particular time? The Odyssey as a cruiser will uh, cruisers do not use cannons. I have no yeah. I have no uh, no plan on doing that. I don't okay. think anyone ever thought of doing anything. Like All right. That. Well, um, I'll, ba battle cruisers get them, and and cruisers do not. Al, is there any other topic uh, or any other details about the ships you want to cover before we run? 
Yeah, I want to talk about the new technology we have for separation. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and it's a new tech. It, what we did with that. Okay. And I know people have questions about what we're going to do with that. So yeah, I'd be glad to cover that, that. That actually took a large amount of time for us to get right. So we wanted to make sure that these ships were perfect and were as perfect as we could make them. And um, you know, one of the concerns and complaints people have had is they don't like having to stop their ship when they saucer separate or go into multi vector assault mode, and have to, and also when they redock that the redocking ship doesn't match their their actual ship um and that's because in the old versions the uh that's actually just an effect that's coming in and it has no idea what your console is so so we spent a lot of time uh adam you know captain uh, uh captain logan our, our ship artist myself uh, our effects artist our and our animator um really redesigned the way these things work and so now you can uh you can actually separate while moving or and turning and banking. I mean, the problem would happen before is that you would, you know, you would, if you were if you were moving and you summon the saucer, then boop, the saucer would appear behind you as right. opposed to launching this way. Right. And and if you were pitching when you do it, boop, it would appear here as opposed to here like that. So so we invested a lot of time in that, and so now you can actually move and pitch and bank while while separating. If you bank real, if you pitch really high, the the the, the math doesn't exactly work and it comes out a little bit off, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's fine. It looks awesome now. And when it re and reconnects, it looks exactly like your ship. So, well, you know, everybody's going to ask to have it on the old ships that have saucer yeah. sub now. Is that yeah. possible? It will be possible. Um, we want to see how these play out. We want to see what, uh, before we go and redo whatever, we've got the, the galaxy saucer sub, we've got the multi vector, we've got the Dakir. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've mentioned before, we're adding the saucer set to the dreadnought as well. Um, before we go and redo all of those and find out there's this big scathing bug, um, right. we want to make sure we want to shake the bugs out on <laughs> That's this That's a one good first. idea. <laughs> so this, these will be the first one to get them. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be the only ones that will have them for a little while. And if everything works out, we'll start, we'll start retrofitting them. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll definitely do that. It's not going to be a problem, but I just want to make sure that everything is working first. Cool. And, uh, and so then those, those, will, those will all have that ability. Well, is there any other ship details you want to cover before we go? Um, let's see. There what would was, be a good way if people are testing on Tribble to give you feedback? Is it the forum? Is that the best avenue? Or uh, what do you don't, think? Don't yell at me. That's <laughs> just, don't, don't, don't call for my job and tell me that I hate the IP. <laughs> it's just, just you know, come on there, play it, play it, and then comment. Don't comment before playing it. I Al, really Al, you're wearing a Starfleet shirt right now. Nobody <laughs> thinks you hate the I, the IP. <laughs> uh, just, just, I really, really want some direct feedback. Um, I hardly ever get PvP feedback from Tribble. Um, I know it's hard because there's not as many people on there, but that's mm. something I really want to get is PvP feedback from Tribble as opposed to just PvE. Right. So, um, so you need some PvPers to go try it out. Yeah, so I def that's always something very helpful. Uh, uh, you know, that's 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 hard for us to test. We've got we 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 don't have you know I don't have twenty kick ass PVPers at Cryptic, right? We just don't have that many okay. people. We don't. That's 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 we have about thirty people on the entire team, and uh, so so uh, so we really need we really need that level of feedback. Um, question: People have asked whether or not they're going to be able to fly the saucer or the bird of prey or the Aquarius, oh, right. yeah, yeah. like the MVAM. You're not going to do that. I did not want to take that away from the MVAM for two reasons. One is that is that's that that's the shtick for that thing. I don't want to devalue the other ships any more than I you know at all. So so. You will not be able to fly them. That's what the multi-vector does. And one of the reasons that one does is because you're starting off as an escort, and you're basically split into three different escorts. And so it's, it's just slightly different skews. When you, when you switch and when you pick a different ship in, M, in, in that mode, you don't, we don't actually change what you are. You are still your ship. We're just changing your costumes, and then we can kind of push your stats around a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. so if you notice, it's not like your weapons change or anything, right? You don't right. get... Um, so if you're in the Odyssey and then launch that little escort in the back. It's not like we're going to all of a sudden swap out your entire paper doll. Now you'll have quad cannons, and, and, uh, and, and you'll just still have your beam boat that you had before. And so it's really not going to feel like you're going to have that. And so that's the other reason why we, do, why we did that. You're not going to be in a bird. You're not going to really be in a bird of prey. The, the change is so drastic. So for the reasons not trying to take away from the MVAM and, not want, and, and, and trying to you know, not reveal the smoke and mirrors that's happening when you separate. You're not going to be able to do that. Um, nor, nor is that going to be a free ship that you'll get as a separate thing. We may release those ships later on as just additional ships that you can, 
you can attain somehow. We, we I don't know, I don't know when and where. They're not, they're not ready. They're not playable. They're not set up as playable at this time. Um, but they they will not be playable in any form once when we first release these. So okay. I know that's been, that's been a question that's come up. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've seen that come up a couple times. Um, um, I don't see if there was trying to check here if there are any other questions that. Um, I did originally say 80% efficiency on cloaking on the Bortosk, and that is a typo. Jeremy's mentioned a couple of times it's only 96%. <laughs> it's, not, it's actually 96%. Uh, um, there, there was a question that came across, and this is in regards to the, the new bridge, and I just saw an additional question that comes with it. So I have real three quick questions, and then I have nothing else for you. The bridge that's coming with this Plus One Odyssey, um, will that be allowed to be fit on any other ship other than the Odyssey, including nope. the prototype? No. So it's nope. isolated to just the Plus One ship. Yeah, you'll you'll uh, yes, it'll be it'll be on that ship. It's a gorgeous bridge. It's actually a double level bridge. Ooh. So, so it comes uh, as a default, but it's not a skin that can be moved to other ships, such yeah, as it, like the Galaxy, is, and it's not modable. Correct. It is it is uh, it is the default. You can put any of your other bridges on it if you'd like to go back to some of the other bridges. Um, and uh, so it is it is a default bridge. It's uh, it's only on the. Uh, it only works on there. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's just a bridge. It's not an entire ship interior. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I think people are going to be blown away. Um, it was made by by Adam, our ship our ship artist. He really wanted to do some interior work, and so he did that. And he did the uh, the 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 poor Tosk one as well. Right on. Can't okay. wait to get my hands on that. Well, first thing I got to do is get over to Tribble. Now that bridge probably won't be on Tribble, will it? Um, no, I think it should be. Okay, good. I'm, good. I'm not. I actually I. Yeah. You're it sure? should should be okay. Um, but <laughs> uh, if, if, if it's not immediately, it it will probably it will be there before uh, within a day or so. So one it's... last ship question, Al, that's coming out of the chat room, and it's not it's a totally different topic. But who somebody at Cryptic mentioned that there might be a Galaxy ship pack soon. Is there any details you can share on that, or is that too soon? Um, yeah, we're thinking about we're we're, we're you know we're we're always trying different things, right? And so it's a. Uh, it's kind of one of the reasons why I was working on the uh, the, uh, the the dreadnought doing doing saucer separation, making changes of those all those powers. You know, you can put the antimatter spread works on. Uh, mm. You know, when you when you have the antimatter spread from the uh, tier four mm -hmm. uh, galaxy, uh, sea star galaxy, you know that works on the it works on the uh, the saucer when you separate the uh, the uh, retrofit galaxy, and so so we kind of want to want all those to work all together and so so we're looking at doing uh, doing something special with that but i don't really have any specific details looks like salami inferno in the chat room is saying that the the uh, bridge probably won't make it for monday's triple okay so, he's on know. there okay great yeah yeah, yeah yeah so that won't that won't make it there but but uh okay. I, i'm not sure i think there were some screenshots released of it i don't know yeah if there, there have been we yeah. Did. yeah well and also it was it was briefly shown in the in the featured episode we saw we saw a oh, good flash true. of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it looked great. Sure, so sure got to play, but me. So yeah. <laughs> well, you were busy fixing your uh, your machine for the for the show, so yeah, we I appreciate hope, that. I, I don't know if this new video card will be able to run the game. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, it'll hold up. I can <laughs> that's do rough, something. man. That's <laughs> rough. Well, Al, I think that covers everything. Yeah. Sure. Unless there's any anything else, uh, um, I'll I will be uh, I'll I'll try to update try to update these stats and uh, and and keep update updating them. There will be a full dev blog post with even more details coming okay. out early early next week um okay. so that will have uh answer more questions probably talking about pricing at that point i presume and uh and 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 other and okay other well, that's, that's when details. we get the monies the details that's, like that some of us are waiting for that one to find <laughs> yeah. out how broke we're gonna be yeah <laughs> gotta start saving well al you know Just what start is mining your dilithium man Just yeah, that's right. oh. <laughs> we've already got guys in the fleet that are preparing for it yeah uh, we do we're starting <laughs> Al, I think Mav and I, we can keep our ear to the emails if people are sending in questions to yes. stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com. If I see a bunch of them, I might uh, sort of surmise and send them your way to kind of see what people are talking about. And uh, maybe in the future, we'll get you on and do another chat about uh, some more details if, if questions come up and stuff like that. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, it sounds great to me. Uh, if I if, if, uh, have my way and, and everything works out, we're talking to, uh, trying to release a new ship every month. So, oh, uh, right oh. On. so we'll see. We've already got a lot of the things in the pipeline working. And oh, so, my ship slots, Chris. Yeah, yeah. That's not a commitment. I'm just going to say that again. It's, it's just a but, hope, though, right? Yeah, but we're yeah. but but we've got we've got a whole bunch of stuff lined up, and so I'm happy to come on and talk about each one as as they come out. I so that means it's ships. time for Chris to invest in ship slots. That's what oh, that means. Yeah. I've totally <laughs> filled up. So time to clean up your inventory and open up some ship slots. Yeah, I could kick a few ships out, but I just hate to see them go. I hate to see them go. All right, Al. Well, thanks for coming on and uh, chatting with these details. You know I'm super excited to see it, and uh, I encourage everybody to go out on Tribble, try this thing out, and uh, give Al your, uh, your gentle feedback, right? Thank you. 
<laughs> yes, thank you. We'll, we'll take the tech. We'll take the tech feedback and then give it to Al in a nice little package. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll just read the. I'll just read the summaries. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, Al. Well, thanks for coming on, uh, and uh, let's move on to the next segment. Excuse me, here is an entertaining bug that just came up recently as a result of the STFs from yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, what is with the Borg ships starting to tilt drunkly on their axis? And we do have some screenshots that, we'll be, that we're going to be sending into the studio here shortly. Um, like but we were, we're, we were they were they were straight, and then all of a sudden they would tilt towards you, and then tilt back like if they're in a rocking chair. And we're like, what in the world is going on with these? Oh, I have no idea. For a minute, we I'm, thought for honestly, a minute we thought they were going to start rolling like dice all over us, or some kind of new attack maneuver or something. Oh, then that was, must be something from Neverwinter. You know, D and D has dice, <laughs> so it just no, it was really no entertaining. It was like, look, it's staring at you, and it was—it was easy to tell who had hate because all of a sudden he would lean towards you and then lean towards somebody else. It well, was it might really be—it might be actually power specific. Then uh, there might be because actually Borgs have no turning radius. All of their weapons and and uh, powers should be 360, so that they don't have to turn necessarily. They just kind of do a, a kind of an ambient turn while they fly around in space. Somebody's saying it's happening in Karat too. So yeah, yeah, I just saw that scroll across, yeah. and yeah, the invisible torpedo—they're all the same critters. Too. So. Yeah. Uh, Gecko's asking which ship. It's cubes, right? Yes, it is the uh, Borg cubes. Is it tactical cubes or, or main cubes or just regular cubes? Um, Irish, if you're in channel, what was it? Was it both cube? It was tac cube only, or was Richter it Richter Scale says that the spheres are doing it as well. Oh, the spheres doing it as well. Well, they're round, yeah. so it's a little harder to tell. But that's a good well, idea. But, but still, they've got that equatorial glow, so if that you can tell if they tilt. Got it. Okay, so all so all Borg are starting to do that. Or mostly cubes. It's the, it's the cubes, cubes and spheres. Okay. Do you want to get this? Is well, somebody asked uh, briefly, and you mentioned uh, offhandedly about the uh, invisible torpedoes. Yes. In STFs, that is something that's being worked into. the the uh, The issue itself is that uh, effects in our games have different priorities, and uh, torpedoes are set to the highest priority, especially the ones that can be targeted. But the problem is that there are many other effects that are also set to the highest priority, and if uh -huh. too many of those get on your screen at one time, um, they start to disappear, and it's. It seems to be, I, I don't know the engine well enough to say exactly uh, how it determines, but it seems to be a little bit arbitrary as to which ones disappear. So that's why some effects just aren't showing up, is we need to look at the ones that are actually potentially not as critical as they were originally assigned to be. Like maybe the Borg's beam weapons or something could be turned down to a lower uh, priority so that their torpedoes are always seen. Uh, that's what the fix is going to have to be eventually, but the trouble there is that it's very hard internally to test a battle with 12 Borg and five players right. and actually see all the powers going off and everything right. to Something's see all the interactions. Um, right. It's not oh. impossible. It just takes a lot of, uh, of internal time and coordination. Yeah. To get it yeah. going. This one I've heard a couple of times recently within the last week. Uh, Fire at Will seems to be a never miss attack. Is that working as intended? For the moment, yes. Uh, the problem with Fire at Will is that it is a very complicated return effect uh, type power. You're not actually shooting the enemy. I mean, it, technically, it looks like that, but what's actually going on is that you're, the effects are being played from the enemy to you. It's a, it's a response sort of thing. And because that's the case, it has led to some limitations. It's even harder to do miss animations, which are, you know, our effects artist, it, nobody really knows how he did the magic that he did recently with, that made us able to miss with weapons in space. I love that. It's a cool, really cool addition really to the game. But there's something about the way that Fire at Will is, is built that those types of animations, the same magic that he used to get that working, doesn't work with Fire at Will. So for the time being, yes, it, it can't miss. Now, I don't know if its accuracy should actually be 100% or if it should be like the old way, where when your beam actually it, it displays as connecting, but it can still be a miss. Um, so that's something that just needs more review. Um, I'm not sure if it's intended to be a 100% accuracy. 
Hulk, uh, we are aware right now, and so is Cryptic, that there is an issue with uh, shield distribution officers and the new Jem'Hadar shields. They are already well aware of the problem. And they, so, but yeah, yeah, but Cryptic, we'll get to Cryptic it as soon as we can. Yeah, Cryptic, <laughs> we, they knew we, they, it was broadcast, and they've known about that since almost, I'd say, within 10 minutes of the episode being released that that is an issue. So yeah. they are aware of it right now. Yeah, we're aware of it. So enjoy it for now, but it, it's not going to be there forever. <laughs> yeah. And I apologize to the PVPers play over the weekend. Oh, uh, yeah. There have been some issues with demo recording. And oh. unfortunately, the developer that created that tool uh, has moved on to a different project. Oh. So it, it's getting only the bare minimum of support. And, and some of the inner workings of it, not everybody knows how to make them work. Cool. It's all the same code base, so somebody could probably sit down and learn. You know what? That's a good question because I've been even, because I'm <laughs> starting to dive into the Foundry. Are they looking at adding any more Foundry assets anytime soon? Um, Salami might be better able to answer this, but as I understand it, we're not really looking at adding uh, assets or features or functionality to the Foundry until we see what the next code branch brings to us. Okay. Uh, because we're going to have to be doing a lot of adaptation to that. There's been a lot of uh, internal um, new things added to the Foundry in, in that new code branch, and we're going to have to adapt to it. With, so, the, with, the, with the code branching, is that what they're looking at to like wrap into like maybe, say, Season 6? Yeah, it's most likely that code branching is typically what marks our seasons. Uh, our seasons are probably are typically also marked by large systems updates, things like the DOF system and and uh, and such. And so, uh, the release of the Foundry, things like that. So, um, not so much content. How's but your craft? How's your crafting design going? That was another good. Still question. Still under review. A, <laughs> I am a huge crafter, and I can't wait to see some changes. Uh, I'm personally really excited, really anxious to get working on that. Have you heard anything about fleet-based, uh, either fleet-based events, fleet star bases, or anything? The best I, I can say right now is that it's in design discussion. Okay, and so it's, that... it's still being talked about. Oh yeah, yeah, in okay. in very real terms. Okay, um, just like the crafting revamp is in very real terms. It's a question of when it's going to happen and what it's a, it exactly is going to look like when it comes out is very much in the air right now, which is why we're not releasing any information. I, I know what uh, here's a question. Uh, here's a question from the chat room that I'll read, and uh, it says, "Jman, is there any power you've seen in other games or areas, uh, or maybe in a Star Trek show that you'd like to see uh, brought over to the game?" Well, okay, I'll blow my load here. One of my favorite things about uh, Star Wars The Old Republic is their social integration. And oh one boy. of the, my favorite things that they had is a party bomb. Where you throw down this AoE explosion everybody and everybody parts. starts dancing. <laughs> yes, I'm aware and of And I may shamelessly steal that from them that and put it on the great. GPL store. Uh, Gecko wants the uh, Picard maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, technically we already have the two um, portions of the Picard maneuver. We have subspace jump and sure we have time. the Nova... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Decoy. So yeah. really, it's just a matter of getting those working together in the right manner to Decoy get the carbon over. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a common subject of conversation that fleet actions are not where we want them to be. And they need another look. Uh, when and how that happens, I can't really comment on. Okay. Well, at least they're still being talked about. That the fact that it's not just something sitting on an index card, sitting in a filing cabinet that they're well, actually. I'll, I'll tell you quite honestly that uh, Jack Emmert, our CEO, loves fleet actions and hates fleet actions. So <laughs> so it's it, that's one of the reasons it's a common subject of conversation because he, he loves going into them and he loves the, the potential that they have, but actually the experience of doing them is not up to snuff. Oh, oh targ breeding. Um, I don't even know if that's officially been designed yet, but Gecko uh, wants to get that in. I'll just say our schedule is tight. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, a lot of folks like to come in on the weekends because not only do they get to get their work out of the way and you get it caught up on deadlines, but you get time to make things like party bombs. Uh, so, like, a lot of the uh, additions that have been done to the DOF system are because Heretic is so devoted to it. He comes in on the weekends and adds new features and new, new assignments and things like that. And actually, we just... Uh, we recently hired a new guy into the systems team whose last name is Roe, so we've been calling him Ensign Roe. And, um, and he loves the DOF system as well, and he's been churning out new assignments like crazy. He's, he's even, uh, he's a hundred times better at it than I am. I, you know, I'm, the last assignments that I really made, I made a couple chains for the expansion that, that came out this, this last week. Um, but the real ones that I'm, the first ones I made were the holiday ones, and they were just terrible. They were bad slotting, and it, it was not good. I, Ensign Rowe has a, a definite affinity for the DOF system, which is which is great for anybody that it, that it, that enjoys that. The way that consoles basically work is like a, a Mark II green is the same as a Mark III white. A Mark II blue is the same as a Mark III green. 
Um, basically, adding a level of rarity to it adds a mark. Um, now, since there's nothing above Mark 12, Mark 12 is basically like Mark 12 white is Mark 12. Mark 12 green is a Mark 13 in effectiveness. One of the upcoming code branches, I don't know if it's the same one that we'll be moving to soon, but one of the upcoming ones has a series of internal tools that make it much uh, easier to create um, good good PvP maps. Uh, no, he's not back. He's here today, and it's a treat because he's on vacation, but he's still yep. talking shop. Yep. And J-Man, you might just build a comment if this is possible, not if, not if it's ever going to happen, mm -hmm. but... Would it be possible? So you know, what, a lot of people are really sort of up in arms about the STF drop rate, and and Ooh, so I guess I have two one. questions about that. And this one's kind of a systems one: Is that drop rate sh like split among all the players on the team? So if it's like a zero point five no. chance of drop? No, I um, I was actually going to save this because we were supposed to have Gozer on, but I yeah. can I can comment on this a little bit. The the reward tables that are set up for the STFs is basically every single player on the team has their own separate roles and right now because we have the chance box there's three separate roles that you get the first table is like the kind of standard loop that everybody knows about i i i don't know exactly what's on that table but that's the one that doesn't include the the rare tech drops and things like that right okay. then there's a second table that is mostly empty and then has a few really cool rewards yeah and that's where you get the prototype tech drops from and things like that and then there's a third table that is almost completely empty except the gold box and I, I think the silver box as well. Have you heard that there's a bug in the STS where players get kicked from the team? Yeah, we actually just put a fix to Tribble. It might be live by now, but okay. it should have should have addressed that. Yeah, okay. yeah. We talked. Right yeah, this is one of the reasons why we were hoping to get Gozer on so we can clear all the air on the confusion if there was any. Yeah, but I well, guess te and technical problems kept us from getting to him. Okay, Chris wants to kick me out of the studio so he can do his intro. And that brings us to the end of this week's show. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Now, you know that Stoked is live over on Saturdays. We're going back to the 11 a.m. time slot now that the featured episodes are done. And I encourage you to join us over at jblive.tv Saturdays at 11. You can rock out in our cool chat room. We've often got devs in there. We've got a bunch of enthusiasts in there, fleet people in there. Uh, it's just a great experience for the entire community, and you get to chat in there while you play along. So thanks to everybody who joined me over at JBLive.tv. And of course, a big thanks to Mav for coming on this week and uh, chatting with Al, and thanks to Al and Jeremy for coming on and chatting with stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the whole featured set, and uh, of course, I want to hear your feedback, so email me, stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm twitter.com slash chrislas, or if you use a bunch of other social networks, Google Plus is one of my favorites. You can find all of my links over at bit.ly ly slash chris fisher all right everyone well thanks again for tuning in this week's episode of stoked and i'll see you right back here next week Oh my god, this is so cool. All right, okay, okay, that's cool. That's cool. I'm not freaking out. I'm not freaking out. Fly! Look at oh, that. I, I gotta get a demo of that, too. Hold on. Oh. I gotta get a demo. Oh, Chris, Are you serious? Really? Serious. Oh, All right, right on. EV Super Supporter Party, let's do it. Oh, snaps!